Welcome back. We're talking about social media. And again, social media is media we own. We control the media outlet, um, the media channel. We control the content. We control the um, dialogue or lack of dialogue or um, solicitation of people to buy our media channel. And again, we're not, we're not paying for it, but we're trying to get our circulation out there, right? We want our Facebook page to be embraced by lots of people in our target market. And so we've got a lot going on here. We, this is media we own, so we have a lot of responsibility. It's an important part of our um, industry, as you now know. And I knew you already knew, um, but more and more we're learning, again, how often utilized. And what we haven't done is really done a great job in measuring its impact. So we'll continue to learn about that, but we need to get better as a social media strategist. We need to get better about being owners of our own media and how we're going to utilize that um, because we control the message and we control the content and we control the engagement. So so let's get good at it and let's really use this to its potential. So this is real-time marketing. This is dialoguing, marketing communication, um, and again, an important part of our mix. But as earlier shared, it can be incredibly overwhelming. There are more and more channels developed every day, um, more and more opportunities to be engaged. We better we understand our target markets, their behaviors and patterns, and staying in tune with those because they change on a regular basis and they change faster than they ever have. The better we stay engaged with our markets again, the better we're going to adapt and change our communication mix to, to make sure we're doing that. So welcome to social media. Let's get going. Again, um, supplemental reading related to this topic because it changes so fast and it certainly has changed since our textbook. Um, so that's why we're focusing it as a priority as we go. So what we do know is, again, these supplemental materials that I've put on, there are lots of folks thinking about studying and just focusing on the social media topic. And one of my favorite quick videos that I ask you um, to watch first, and I asked you already to watch first, is the Happy Marketing Club. Um, our author here, she does, you know, five to 15 minute maximum videos just on social media tips. And as we try to get better, she has solely focused her career, right, on helping people learn and get better with social media. So it really does some hard hitting, fast facts in a short amount of time. Love her branding, love the idea that it's simple, it's powerful. So take a look at resources like this and that's what I want you to get used to is this is lifelong learning this isn't get a college degree take a class and be done especially in topics related to people that, that change regularly again this was outdated the day the book came out and it's outdated today already for what we should be thinking about and doing tomorrow so so finding tools to help you lifelong learn about subject areas that are going to be important to your success as an organization um, are important. So here are a couple resources. We know there's some new literature you have to press what we know about social media and tourism. This article is in our resources, Social Media and Tourism and Hospitality, a literature review. So they've looked at all the research that's been done. I love articles like that that are summarizing lots of research for me, so I don't have to find all of that research. So these are two really good pieces. But there's also some great webinars and presentations on our industry and use of tools. And so here's how um, tourism destination marketing organizations are using Instagram. So again, Instagram, you might be familiar, obviously, as a consumer, certainly for a traditional college-age student. Instagram is a popular tool, photos only. Um, but how are organizations developing a strategy to use Instagram and how are they developing, again, those followers um, or the people who are interested in that, those photos. So it's a great presentation that I'd ask you to take a look at um, related to how, again, destination organizations are using Instagram as a tool. And so may or may not relate to your organization or your target market. And then there's individual um, you know, articles. So not only am I looking at research here, and I'm looking at people who are doing training and education in social media that are quick and easy and helpful to understand, um, I'm also looking for tools and resources in popular press because people are talking about social media. So this is a popular press article that is about um, Marriott's engagement in their bold move about using Snapchat. So again, 
very targeted toward a different market. These folks who are using Snapchat are not using, you know, Facebook. We know, we know, and I'll show you some more research on who is using what tool. But again, that changes regularly. So we want to look for the most up-to-date information we can find from reliable sources to help us figure out if we don't know who's using what channel and, and how we should be using it, etc. So these pieces are to supplement our um, reading knowledge, you know, background in it. And I encourage you to be a regular lifelong learner related to topics that will dramatically impact the success of your career and your organization and our industry. So moving forward, um, here's what we know. 80% of leisure travelers use the internet as a planning resource. We know it's the number one hit thing, but we also know our consumers are using it, whether you're an attraction, a restaurant, a hotel, a park, a campground, a, any part of our industry. Um, people are using it and seeking information about you. Um, and it may end up through online chats of things you don't even control, like TripAdvisor, right? Like um, other, other sources, Yelp, you know, other places that people are talking about you, whether you're engaged in that conversation or not. So knowing that those channels are existing and you have no control over that content, you, have, um, you better make sure you've got channels established that um, you do control and can work with content. We also know that a 2013 Nielsen study found that 68% of global respondents trusted online consumer opinions in travel-related decisions. 68% um, trusted online consumer opinions. So when they are reading TripAdvisor, they're reading it and they believe it. So whether it's true or not is a different story. The biggest point is people really do trust and believe in the opinions that they're reading. So important that you stay abreast as an organization as to what it's saying, but also to be engaged in that process with them. If you found you have um, a dissatisfied customer, what an opportunity to be able to respond to them and say that you're sorry for that happening and you'd like to find out more so you could improve and let other consumers see that dialogue between you and a dissatisfied guest. There are so many opportunities to do more um, and not be afraid of that dialogue, but to use it as an opportunity always. But what's interesting to me is when the uh, Nielsen study also looked at what percentage of the information that we hear from family and friends do we believe, that's at 84%. So certainly higher makes some sense, but certainly not a huge gap between how much we trust um, an online opinion by a stranger and we trust things that we find um, on the internet in those channels. 52% of Facebook users said they changed existing travel plans after seeing content and photos posted by family, friends, and others. So already had determined their travel plans, were online searching out other things, and half of the travelers changed something as a result of those posts and photos. I think, again, an incredibly powerful, powerful, trusted source if um, we're changing the information that we're seeing from social media sites, websites, etc. So, food for thought. What we also know is as a result of social media, in our industry, there is an increasing mistrust for traditional marketing tactics and a decreased effect of traditional mass media marketing. So as I was sharing earlier, traditional advertisement in a newspaper has lost its impact. Not only has it been losing impact for 20 years or 30 years in terms of um, there are so many other channels to pick from and people were just still in that same rut of doing their old traditional ways of communicating. And so it was losing impact. Now with social media, it's mistrusted impact because everybody knows anybody can buy their information into a publication. But if it's in a social dialoguing site, right, or it's in a um, review site, that's more trusted than you pushing content that you paid for. So we need to understand that, to understand how people are thinking and believing and most importantly, taking action. What is What kind of information can they get from me that's believable and trusted 
and meaningful that they take action in a positive way and come to us, right? Let us let us serve them, etc. So I think our biggest issue is really thinking about how organizations even approach social media in our business. And this social media strategy framework to me is a great, great tool to think about this whole social media process in distinct steps. And for you to evaluate how your organization currently does it and what kind of recommendations as a result to this kind of framework you could suggest to your organization to help them improve on this powerful communication mix, if indeed it's one they should be using and doing. And I venture to say there, there's at least some channels, depending on the target market, that make a lot of sense. Um, I'll say this later, but I want to highly encourage it now. If you're going to be in the social media business and have channels that are your responsibility, then own that social media channel. Do it like it was your magazine, right, that you owned and you needed to get circulation and you needed to get content. If you're going to do it, do it well. Don't dabble in things. And that's one of the biggest challenges we face in our industry is we're dabblers. We start a Facebook page and a Twitter account and we do it occasionally and we think we're doing things but we're really not producing an effect so if you're going to do it own it and do it well or don't do it and I'd rather see you do one social media channel um, and do it really well than try and do 10 and not well at all so it's kind of the same premise about picking target markets so going back to the social media strategy, if we're going to own it, let's figure out all the other things we need to have in place. So let me highlight first, we should be prioritizing objectives. What are we wanting to have happen? And why are we even doing the social media you know, channel? Um, do we have objectives related to increasing the number of fans or users or hits or um, uh, likes or uh, pages that you've um, tapped into, etc.? But what, what is our objective? Are we trying to get people to share our content with others and expand distribution that way? Are we trying to get people to buy, take action, purchase, right, consume, buy tickets, complete a survey? What are we trying to do? So we need to set objectives first. We then need to establish governance. And governance, again, means who is responsible for this channel. I think of it like an editor. Who is the editor we're hiring to be responsible for this media channel that we own and and have to decide who gets to come in on it who gets to come in so in every organization there be should be a system of who is responsible for social media channels who is the editor right of those channels and who is allowed to comment post tap into we want to really protect that um, um, and I don't mean protect in terms of only let one person post I mean uh, protect it in terms of having a strategy of who we should allow um, and then have we clearly defined the kind of conversation we want to have in that, what kind of personality we want to have in that, how we handle situations like a negative comment by a guest. Um, we see lots, and I've had students show me over time, lots of organizations just ignore the negative post. Or uh, we've known, we've seen it on there, and then it's been gone, so they've deleted the negative post. So we want to be really careful about um, how those things are being handled because those are two strategies I would not say are good in terms of um, negative kinds of information. We want to we want to address it. We want to show that we care. We want to show that we're um, here to make a positive experience and that we apologize for times that it hasn't gone as we all had hoped. So, and take action to improve on it. And show people that, again, they're going to trust us more when we show we're going to take care of them. And that all goes back to the quality service chapter, the importance of that, because what? the base of all great marketing okay <laughs> so establishing governance is key and I I get very concerned when the governance is a, an intern part-time um, with uh, maybe little training or framework um, I had a student just this last week get a new position she's their social media manager at a hotel and has no guidance so uh, it's just an interesting place so establishing governance Think of it like an editor, again, of the channel. Defining the activities to be done, that's what we're even going to suggest to these organizations now, is de developing a content calendar, um, developing a timeline, a strategy at, uh, related to specific activities we're going to take to communicate through the channels that we own. Um, I love this develop capabilities as the next step. So you think about it, we're going to set objectives, we're going to make sure who's responsible for it and what those boundaries are. 
um, or multiple parties, and then we're going to define activities. But I love, love, love when I see organizations develop capabilities that extend and teach others. Um, again, utilizing, engaging um, with that social media um, tool. So, for example, we um, was recently working with a festival and suggested to them that we take our volunteer base and we give them capability to engage with our social media because the volunteer base was huge, huge related to volunteer bases, thousands of volunteers, and that what a powerful distribution um, tool we could use because we already had survey research to support volunteers loved being volunteers. They thought it was well run. They, they thought the festival um, was an important part of the community, important part of tourism, etc. So they were great advocates or what we call brand ambassadors, right, for our festival. So why would we not try and engage them to be engaged with our content and develop some capabilities for them to share with others and expand? Just remember that distribution idea. We start here. If I get 10 volunteers or board members or employees to help spread that word, to their 10, to their 10, you you get it. So um, I love it when I see organizations be very strategic about trying to build capability within and through their strong brand ambassadors. We want to measure and refine always. Again, typically it's not what we're really good at, and we don't have a lot of data because we're not been measuring it in social media realm, so but we absolutely need to. Just because we're doing it doesn't mean it's producing a return, and so we have to... Um, measure the return of the investment, the ROI, of every kind of tactical decision we take in the communication mix. If I'm going to do a billboard, how do I know if that billboard's worth it? If I'm going to do a coupon book, how do I measure if that was worth it? If I'm going to spend all this time and energy on, on Twitter or Instagram or Pinterest or LinkedIn, if I'm going to use those as tactics for my organization, how am I going to determine if it's worth it? Well, part of it is prioritizing and setting objectives, but also part of it is actually measuring the return and sharing the return. And if it's not working, figure out what's wrong and, and rework it. But if you keep doing the same thing and expect a different outcome, I think that's the definition of insanity. So we want to do that. We want to engage in conversation. And again, I love that this makes an easy step-by-step -step process of what we should be doing. Engaging in conversation with our consumers on a regular basis. So again, if you don't have people engaging, the governance group, right, engaging in this dialogue, that this whole social media tool or your own media publication in this case isn't going to work. So we have to be engaging, we have to be listening, and we have to be learning. And if we're not doing those things, then we have lost full advantage of this whole idea of a dialogue of, of conversation that we've never had the ability to do before. We have never had instant dialogue and instant understanding to answer questions, um, to learn, to grow, to expand, to communicate ever before. So can't say enough about the power of it, but can't say enough about this table in terms of developing a framework. I'm really thankful for this group to put this together and help us be strategic and engaging in the most powerful communication channels that we have because we own them and we can dialogue with them. Nothing like it. So what we've learned from others in, in looking at more research that's been done in our field is there is a positive correlation between the use of a social media site and attitude brand awareness and booking intention in our industry. People we know from the other data trust it, largely trust it, um, not everyone, but largely trust it, um, and so we know it can have a positive effect. Facebook continues to increase in active accounts and users per day. Even though some people say, oh, Facebook is dead. Well, it's dead in some markets, right? People are using it less often in some of our target markets, but other target markets, it's still growing. Greater interaction of customer feedback and searching functionality. We know the data is there, and we know consumers are liking photos. Text, not as popular. Sales instead of contests. Mixing media produced more comments and results. Um, people who just try and sell things, you know, their attraction who just says, come buy tickets to the amusement park. Um, those kinds of interactions aren't as positively um, interacted with as other kinds of things. It's like, oh, meet our longest term employee. This is John. He's been with us for 47 years. Um, here's his favorite part of the job. And, you know, letting him meet the people, um, engaging with, um, telling and teaching people. This is our famous 
um, apple pie that's won an award, let us give you the recipe, you know, kind of idea. Being involved in people in the ways they want to be engaged with us. Meaningful ways based on our strengths, things we do well, things we can help learn and grow and develop together. So hotels were, um, when there's a study done uh, about their social media sites, they were 90% error free with their posts, 85% um, usable URL links, 56% linked to other social media sites, 57% of these hotels are updated daily, and 24% ignore their posts. So again, not just our students' feedback about watching their organization and how they've handled their social media and what they've done, we have evidence to support that quarter of these hotels in the study were ignoring the post too. So again, not like we have a tremendous amount of data yet, but we're getting more and more every day in our field. People, researchers are studying what's happening with social media. Restaurants use it. 73% of full service restaurants um, have social sites, 62% of quick service, and approximately 70% use it to promote specials and menu items. So again, largely using to push Here's what we do, here's what we do. We want to be better at that. We want to be engaging with consumers again on multiple levels that make sense and are meaningful, and we're not just trying to push sales content to them. So here's our challenges. One is we see in a flurry of organizations in our field ineffectively using social media. We want to be better at it. We have to focus on not only attracting users, but engaging users. And again, two different objectives and so often I see organizations not thinking strategically about both. Um, again, think of it like a magazine publication. I could have the greatest publication, but if no one's looking at it, it doesn't matter. So same thing with social media posts. I could be posting all the time. Well, no one's dialoguing back because maybe one, it's not a meaningful conversation or two, there's nobody on it. It's even looking or listening or watching or reading, right? Um, so viewing. So there's two distinct variables, and again, you should be thinking about this for your organization. Um, what kind of objectives would you have for each, and how are we going to do that? But again, the other major challenge, as already alluded to, is, is capturing that return on the investment. And how are we going to measure the actions we're taking to know if our time and our resources, or et cetera, are worth it? So what this kind of really means to us is we're using it in our industry, right? We need to get better at using it in our broad industry. And whatever we're doing yesterday and today, it's not gonna work tomorrow. So we need to have regular education um, infused constantly with um, how our markets are changing, how the technologies are changing, what's available to us, what's not. It is amazing to me, resources that emerge every day, but how do you find out about those tools and techniques? So lifelong education and any more today, um, it's, it's more today, more important today than it's ever been because we learn so much every day. Um, if there wasn't such a new insight, I guess it wouldn't be as important, but today, embrace it. You're, you're hopefully in this for the long haul, learning and growing. So here's what we should do. Here's what I think we should do. First of all, let's get better at setting these objectives. Attract, engage, retain, learn, relate. What are we going to do? So. Each of these might be an objective that you should write for your organization. You say, for our social media, here's what I would recommend for this target market. We want to grow our social media sites by this. We want to have, um, uh, we want to have our brand loyal fans sharing our content with others to increase that distribution. And then we want to have dialogue. We want to have so many people respond to posts. Um, we want to have our regular dialogue back. You know, we want to build brand loyalty in that um, through those social sites. Again, if we're going to have them, we're going to own them. And, well, we do own them, but we're going to use um, them and do it well. So we want to always protect the brand and keep the brand personality. So whatever you established in your um, brand identity decisions, we want to maintain and keep that tone, reflection, um, if you have a fun, lighthearted, um, positive kind of engagement, then you want to keep that kind of engagement in every you know, kind of post and information. Same kind of feel and touch you had in your brochure. You want to keep you know, that, that same kind of interactive nature. Um, you have to know what the target market behaviors are and what works for those target markets. And again, make sure you have a very, very strategic, tactical plan for engaging 
the market you decided to focus on. And then you need to know what's hot and what's next, as, as already shared. Um, know what we do, know what competitors do, know what benchmark organizations do. Who's doing it really well? Who in our industry or outside of our industry is awesome with these social sites? And um, the beauty is you can like and be a fan and a follower of their sites. So always, as indicated before, you should absolutely be a fan or a follower or a like of your own social site. You should be that of your competitor's social sites, and you should certainly be that for benchmark organizations who do it really well. That's one way we can be in a continuous mode of learning and growing. Um, uh, join groups, right? whether it's social groups, etc. So so we know here in this article, still more data shows Pinterest passing Twitter in popularity. You know, whether it's true or not for every aspect of our industry and for certain markets, but take a look at that kind of information and data so you can learn and see. Too often we're putting our own bias into these decisions about social channels, and we want to make sure we're learning about what's out there. So one of the other steps, aside from, you know, doing setting objectives and thinking of all this kind of strategic elements is evaluate what you currently use, what you did in a, a social media assessment, but also analytics. Um, analytics, a powerful form of information that every social site in your website can have free services that help you understand how people are engaging in your information, how many times they click on things, how many when they come into your sites. Um, uh, from what geographic locations are they coming from. So every social media has tools that analytics can help us understand. Yet when I work with a lot of organizations in our field, we aren't even looking at what, what the inside can tell us about what's happening on the outside. So you want to make sure you have access to those tools and make sure you understand those tools. I'll have a few links for you that um, help you better understand analytic information. Again, uh, it, it's pretty, um, on some level, pretty self-explanatory. You can get some first-level data pretty easy, but it can be also incredibly sophisticated in terms of analysis of what those sites are doing. Lots of online tools will help. And again, I'll, I'll link you to some of those just to make you more aware of the power of analytics and uh, what we can learn so we can be better about what we're doing. So. Do you know where traffic is coming from? Do you know who they are? Do you know if they're loyal? Are they angry? Are they sharing? Right? Are they responding? Do you know who, not only where they're coming from, but what market segments are they? What do the people look like who are using it? There are tools we can use. Again, Google Analytics I mentioned, or Hootsuite. Um, those kinds of sites help us organize our social media sites. Because again, if I have four channels going and I have content wanting to be posted on all of them, um, how do I manage that every day, seven days a week, 365 days a year, if I want to do that regularly? Well, there are systems now in place that can take all my channels, put it into one um, location so I can manage them from one spot versus four spots. And I can also arrange posts to be posted down the road, right? I can schedule them out so it's not um, any longer treating each one um, independently. If I've got multiple channels, there are systems in place that help me organize those tools. But also when I use that kind of system, there are analytic tools within that that help me look and engage um, to see that complexity between various sites. We also should, again, once we know tools that are available to us, we've set objectives, we've looked at um, engagement, we need to obviously pick the right channels to use. So we've already seen some picture slides here um, in this PowerPoint that uh, expands on all of the choices available to us. Certainly these are the more popular types of web, um, social sites, whether it's a blog that you produce or it's YouTube videos that you post or LinkedIn group that you've created, right? Um, uh, you've done a Facebook or Twitter or Flickr or whatever. So select those you can do well and own the media as already shared multiple times, but let me just highlight it here. You need to determine for your organization what channels they should use for this target market. Whether they're using them now or not, you're going to make recommendations to, these are the channels I 
uh, that you're going to suggest to them, and then you're also going to suggest to them how they're going to use it. So in determining what channels make the most sense, we're going to again look at some data or research. This is a beautiful infographic um, that was shared about millennia travelers driving new technologies, again, in our industry that age strongly influences mobile device and social media usage. And then there's the percent by generation um, from baby boomers like me to Gen Xers in between us to millennials like you, um, who's using what kind of tool. So I love data like this that can help me not only make a good decision, especially if it's a market I don't understand um, or it's harder for me to understand exactly what they're doing. Love using data to do this, but also love using this kind of data to share with others so they know why we're making the decision we're making. So, but this again changes frequently. So we want to stay abreast on data and understand people's use of, um, in our industry specifically if we can. For, certainly overall is helpful, but in our industry is even more helpful. How people are using um, social kinds of sites for that. So. Here's some data for you to give you some conversation and thinking about it, but we need to have that if we're going to determine what social channels to use. Next then, after we pick that social channel, we've got to figure out content. And, and for me, this is one of the hardest aspects of you know, owning your own media, is figuring out, okay, what are we going to do in our own media? Again, think of like a magazine. Well, what are you going to put in that magazine every month? Well, now we're talking about maybe every day or maybe you know, more than once a day. What are we going to do that is meaningful and interesting and valuable that our readers are going to want to read it or, re or our viewers are going to want to watch it? You know, if you're going to do a YouTube video, just don't do it to do it. Do it so people will be engaged, that people will want to see it, etc. So we are, or you are, <laughs> for your organization going to develop a social media content calendar that will help look at objectives and it'll help look at content organization and some ideas you have for them. Now when we develop content calendars, even though we're doing an annual marketing plan, the social media content calendars will be one month at a time. And reason for that? You already know it. Social media world changes so rapidly and quickly. Um, and we want to have that fluid dynamic that if I even plan for eight months down the road what I might do on the social media, um, chances are I'm going to tweak that. I, I'd like to have a broad idea for the year of what kind of social media themes make sense. If we're going to need volunteers for our event, then February we're going to do volunteerism kinds of things because we need them by May, you know, kind of idea. So it's helpful to have a broad content calendar for the annual year and you certainly can put that into your plan that would be helpful but at a minimum I want you to at least look at one month of this organization and what kind of content calendar you can develop for them. Who's going to do it? What's it going to be? What kind of message is it going to be? What kind of content is it going to be? I'm not asking you to develop the content. I'm asking you to think about themes, concepts, what they should be talking about. Should it be a sales push? Should it be a contest? Should it be a survey? Should it be a um, interest, um, personal interest story about one of our employees, you know, our volunteers? What, what should it be? So your job is, and here are some sample content calendars that exist to kind of give you a framework or a format. Um, and you can decide, again, how you do that and what you do. But here are different ways organizations have developed tools to create those content calendars. So on a simple level, I did the same thing for Michigan Cares. And um, I put this template available to you on Blackboard should you want it to use it. And it, it simplifies the first kind of thought concept of what to do. So we have five channels that uh, we've decided for certain target markets. But for this target market, we've identified I'm only going to use three channels in particular. And I have current users. I have a user goal you know, for this month, and I have a share goal. And so I've set objectives related to increasing who have I've attracted to the site and how much they've distributed the site to others. I have objectives related to that. And I've made uh, an objective in terms of frequency of posts, and I have some content that I'm beginning to develop in these categories. So again, content development is difficult. I'm not, I'm not going to deny that. That's, it's an area that I want to continue to grow in. 
as the owner of some social sites that I am responsible for. And, um, you know, when I think of Michigan Cares for Tourism and our social site, I, I really kind of strategically rethought um, that I want to be, you know, not just talking about our events and what we're doing. I want to be, for our industry, a volunteer um, site source. If you're interested in volunteering in our field, I want to be a source to help you connect and link to a whole bunch of different volunteer opportunities. So our my short-term, long-term kind of objective for our social sites is to be a more valued resource to the people subscribing to our site who are tourism professionals um, in terms of not only our own volunteer events and our volunteer efforts, but m more about volunteering in general. And so um, we're going to move in that direction. And But again, that's an important strategic conversation. And then tactically, it changes uh, everything, what our content's going to be, how we're going to post it how we're going to engage people and, and what we're going to do. So so it's a constant learning, growing, developing kind of system. But here is a framework you can use if you'd like or create your own. But your goal is what social sites are we on? What are our objectives? What's the content going to be for this one month in time? And you can pick the month. I'd also, again, like to see you identify kind of a 12-month or an annual calendar of general content thoughts and I'll attach an example of an organization that's done one recently in our Blackboard site as well. So once you develop some content, content what I also want to highlight and keep in mind is you should be leveraging that content. Um, if I'm going to spend the time doing this profile on this really neat volunteer we've had working with us for a number of years, and I'm going to tell that story, well, I'm not just going to put it on, let's say, Facebook and, and do that. I'm going to link that into several different channels where... Now I might interview that individual and make a YouTube post related to it in a fun little, you know, meet meet the meet our loyal loyal volunteer, um, and again, our audience who might have interested in that story, and and then I'm going to think about how I'm going to use that content to go to other places. Maybe it's the senior center because this happens to be a senior citizen volunteer, and I'm going to leverage that through their channels, and I'm going to post it through other places that would have interested be interested in the story that I've generated and spent time developing because, again, it's, I'm the editor of my publication, so I'm developing my own content. But now I've got to take that content and I've got to really think about where I'm going to put that and engage that. So so I want you to start thinking again. I, as I mentioned, content development is difficult, but now what I've got, and I've really developed this good, meaningful content, I have got to figure out, not only within my own channels I own, but through my partners, through other logical linkage, because they have the same target markets of interest, pushing channel, putting that, that content in other ways, and that's going to give the power of social media. I have got to, and that's a strategic conversation and dialogue. It doesn't just happen. It happens because we're strategic about it. So I love this visual because it gets us thinking visually about what we're trying to talk about. It's really a distribution story again. How are we going to take this piece that we've developed and get it in creative different ways? Always remember any of the partners we have. Are we linking to each other's websites? Are we linking to each other's social media? Am I putting hashtags and posts and linking in my posts to our partners and friends? And, and again, getting on their posts because I've put them in my, whether it's individual names or organizational names. You know how that works. Um, well, and if you don't, we've got lots of content to help you with that. But So finding content, lots of places you can get content. First of all, um, give your target markets what the target markets want. They want photos. They want helpful information. Again, be strategic about what your social sites are going to do. And again, think like a traditional media um, in, in framing what the social media really is about. But think of it and how powerful, more powerful it is because we're engaging and dialoguing. Pay attention to what's most often liked, what's retweeted. You know, again, I use that, but it could be, you know, it could be shared or liked or copied. And what comments start a dialogue? What ones resonate with people? Give your fan base resources that are helpful to them that make sense to you. You know, Mission Cares for Tourism, other volunteer opportunities, I already said, or good deeds or ideas that our industry professionals have done. Um, we did a profile of our volunteers and why they volunteered or what they did. But now we're going to do more beyond just our events. We're going to do it with other volunteer work. And we're going to start to find stories 
of what our industry is doing to volunteer and be the content editors of that. We're going to share a behind the scenes look at um, our organization. We're going to tell our story about our people. We're going to build relationships with people. You know, how about you're a restaurant? How about take your camera and shoot a video of some basic kitchen techniques? You know, cutting onions, cutting cantaloupes. I learned so much when I got to work in a kitchen about things I use every day in my own kitchen at home. And I think what a tool and resource. And uh, any more, even casual videos, because we have access, I, you can tell I have my phone in my hand, um, casual videos can be fun and engaging if the lighting's good and you've done it right, but it doesn't have to be full-blown productions anymore. It, you know, fun, engaging, if it fits your brand personality, do it, you know, and do it and get it out there and, and be positive. So ask your followers for advice. Um, tell them uh, you feel uh, intimately connected to you. You know, if you're traveling, ask your fans which restaurants absolutely they can't miss. Um, hey, on your way here, where'd you stop along the way? There are cool places to tell our other visitors or share with others, you know, what you uh, like best about things to do in the area besides us. I mean, get people to be engaged in a bigger picture. Don't be so narrow-minded. It's just about you. So content generators, their staff can be generators for content and information. Our boards, our volunteers, um, you know, certainly our consumers. We can ask them, hey, what kind of content do you want here? You know, the content say better things but we need to do a better job engaging multiple groups around us because the bottom line marketing is the responsibility of everyone and so we need to do a better job with that so content thoughts again integrate content from other communication channels consistency and messaging that relate to the target audience and follows your themes and concepts that we already developed in your promotional mix you need to find content and there are actual sources of content development, this blog dash, Google blog search, Mashable, other sites, professional associations. There's lots of places to find existing content and we don't have to develop it all ourselves. We just need to find good valuable stuff that maybe other people are producing. And then we want to organize that content. So Evernote organizes visuals and develops content. Those are sources and tools. Google Docs can help us organized content and if we have multiple people engaging in the social media realm you're not acting like an island again but we you know we are involving employees in development of that then then having things like a Google Doc account as simple as that can have people post information or things to those sites that um, everyone can access so placing and delivering content certainly one of the decisions uh, you know again the above the fold kind of thought prime real estate how often you get that content back up to the top so it's going to quickly get lost in your social sites as it goes down and also your website and when you think about placing and delivering again because we want to use that content in all different kinds of places um, and then thinking about what we've learned about when you should post content you know for, first of all when your target market wants it is when you should post it right but um, you know before 9 a.m. you know between 12 and 2 when people are on their sites after five nights and weekends scheduling your posts you know I know from survey research I know Tuesday and Wednesday um, mornings are the best time to post a survey study people have studied that um, if I'm gonna do an online survey I'm not gonna post it on Fridays I'm not gonna post it on Monday and I've done that just to test it even and it doesn't work as well so looking at research about what we can learn about how people access their sites works so what do we know and then again scheduling your posts I already mentioned so integrate in our social media within social media and other media don't forget um, uh, you know things like Hootsuite helping us integrate those things um, as I've already mentioned but there are lots of things we should be taking into consideration about not only um, having objectives picking the right social media channels integrating those channels within our own channels and outside our own channels with partners and others who target the same market, um, building content, finding content, developing good content, not just pushing, hey, we're offering a two-for-one coupon, hey, we have this event going on at our site today, hey, we have this entertainer, what, what, not just pushing, but dialoguing, engaging, asking questions, using this as a media powerful channel that we own and that we need to integrate and dialogue and you know, I like to say have a lot of fun. I think, again, the chance we can talk to consumers daily, what we can learn, how we can grow, how we can build brand loyalty. But I think in our business, boy, how we can have a lot of fun too. So um, no better. So your job is to create um, this 
uh, week's assignment or this this assignment in the marketing plan is to develop a content timeline calendar identifying your objectives you don't have to use this format you can use any format you want but you want an easy to understand template and tool right that you can communicate quickly with others to say hey here's our plan for the month um, what other thoughts do you have how else should we build some content and dialogue um, and we go from there so would like to see a kind of a 12 month estimated calendar of topics you know along the way I'll again put that sample on blackboard but this in particular is one month of exactly what's going to happen um, for the communication channels so as we move forward um, very excited to see your ideas related to social media know your market own your market know your media channels your decisions and own your media channels and decisions um, be creative um, don't do it like everybody else do it um, with great passion great professionalism and you're going to make a difference for your organization so have a great week social media love it love it and guess what it just changed so i'm off to go read some more about what we're learning and what's changing in that part of our field have a great day